Welcome and hello. Today's question is, was Abraham Lincoln a Republican? I picked this question because it crops up regularly by people who are curious, by those who want to use this fact to argue a modern political point, and I guess others. Let's bury the presidential top hat. Yes, Abraham Lincoln was a Republican, but wait, not so fast. It's a lot more interesting than that. Abraham Lincoln didn't start off as a Republican. And this is important if we want to figure out what did Lincoln actually believe in terms of policies. After all, he didn't get much of a chance to initiate or sponsor more typical bills due to his time in office being focused on the Civil War and then otherwise cut short. Lincoln started as a member of the Whig Party and didn't join the Republican Party until 1856. To get an idea of why he joined the Republicans, let's go back a bit further and find out what the Whigs were all about. The Whig Party started way back in the 1830s. It was specifically formed to go against Andrew Jackson. Yeah, that guy. Even though Andrew Jackson was a Democrat, many in the party disagreed with his policies for good reason and broke off to join what was called the Anti-Masonic Party. As they did that, they reformed and were known as the Whig Party. The Whig Party named itself after an anti-monarchy party from back in England and opposed Jackson's treatment of the Native American populations and had also many abolitionists in their ranks as well. It is no wonder that they also opposed the Southerners at the time who were largely part of the Democratic Party due to the South wanting to keep and expand slavery. In 1850, when the South su succeeded getting the Fugitive Slave Act pushed into federal law, the Whig Party was the only prominent opposing voice standing against it, with a then-growing number of Northern Democrats who were also disgusted with the pro-slavery stance of the Democrat Party. But it got worse. In 1854, the Kansas-Nebraska Act was passed. This tore the most popular party at the time, the Democrats, in two. The Democrats split along mostly regional lines, with the Northern Democrats further upset because this bill was passed, because had it failed, expansion of slavery would have been an impossibility in any future state being brought into the Union. Southern Democrats, on the other hand, were wanting this act to be passed to allow for states to continue to add to those that practice slavery. This act passing led to mass violence between these groups, and those fights were known as Bleeding Kansas, which now looks kind of like a mini version of the Civil War. The Whig Party tried to stand against the power the Southern Democrats had solidified, but shortly after the act passed, the party failed entirely. So you have this culmination of events. The Whig Party that Lincoln belonged to had failed, the Northern Democrats had helped to form the Whig Party and were growing more and more upset with the Democratic Party in general because of the Southern Democrats, and enter the Republican Party. They caught wind of this fella who was speaking out not just against slavery's expansion, but rallying people to stand against slavery in its entirety. That's right, one Abraham Lincoln. In quick order, he was nominated as the Republican Party's candidate for the 1860 presidential election. But their ideas were actually incredibly unpopular, in the southern states at least, that practiced slavery. And those states wielded incredible political power. So how did Lincoln win against these odds if his ideas weren't that popular? With the Democratic Party torn in two and having a lot of infighting, it created a divide for the voters. Now, to be fair, most of the Democratic Party at the time were Southern Democrats, and they voted for Breckinridge, the nominee for the Southern Democrats. But some still voted for Douglas, the Northern Democratic representative, who represented more of like a compromise position, you might say, when it came to slavery. They didn't want the expansion of slavery, but they weren't really speaking on abolishing slavery. This allowed Lincoln to come in and sweep a huge lead in the northern states, 
who were more and more against slavery than any pro form of it, even if it was just expansion. So you have to keep in mind, the three parties were far more the same than they were different, except when it came to slavery. That was the only issue that clearly divided these groups, but it was a strong divide. For instance, Lincoln took zero, zero, zip, zilch, electoral college votes from the South because of that divide. But the 180 that came in from the North was enough for him to win in a landslide. So he still wasn't the popular choice. He only took about 40% of the popular vote. So you could stop here if that's all that you wanted to know. Just say Abraham Lincoln was a Republican and how that even got started. But this radical Republican party doesn't sound like the Republican Party I hear a lot of today. Just calling them radical might ruffle some feathers, right? And aren't they significantly more popular in the southern states than the northern ones? How and why did that change? Stick around and we'll get there. So quick history time. 1854, Republican Party is formed as a diehard, radical, anti-slavery, pro-civil rights party. 1860, hating that, Lincoln won. The Southern Democrats split off and a snowball of secessions began happening with the states. 1861, the Civil War starts because of these very things we've talked about. 1865, the Civil War ends in a period known as Reconstruction begins. Also, that same year, Lincoln is assassinated. With Lincoln dead, Andrew Johnson, the vice president, takes over. He pardons all of the Confederate soldiers, and eventually the leaders and the plantation owners as well. Protections that were meant to ensure the continuation of black people being free post-Civil War, that were seen to be seen as equals under the law and maintaining rights to vote, were rolled back by Johnson, leading to what were called black codes in southern states. These were highly restrictive laws meant to impede blacks from working, living freely in those southern states. And there was a huge backlash to this. In 1868, even after being vetoed by Johnson, the Civil Rights Act becomes law thanks to Northern Democrats and Republicans getting together behind it. So things get kind of back on track. And into the 1870s, while blacks and former Northern Democrats made up the majority of the Republican Party in the South, Over a dozen black men were voted into Congress, less than two decades after the Civil War had begun. During this time, though, the Ku Klux Klan rose to prominence, fueled primarily by angry non-black Southerners who saw themselves as suffering from the transition away from slavery and into an employment-based economy. And by 1874, the South was actually even in an economic depression that would partially spread to some of the rest of the United States. In 1875, with no federal response to Southern Democrats using violence to take control of Mississippi, the president at that time basically declared, without saying a single word, that Reconstruction had ended. Soon after, in 1876 and 1877, a series of negotiations takes place, and Hayes promises to return Southern states to their own control removing federal enforcement and protections. If they pinky swore that they would continue to follow the Civil Rights Act and maintain equal rights for black people in their states. And guess what? They promised. And everything was fine since. Actually, it became instantly clear that the South would roll back any changes Reconstruction had created and institute new laws against black citizens. These would be known as the Jim Crow laws. I guess they had their fingers crossed behind their back, eh? Now, where is this all going? Abraham Lincoln was a Republican. This terrible Johnson fellow was a Democrat. Democrats in the South wanted to do everything they could to oppress black people who were primarily Republican at the time. This all is sounding strange because it seems kind of the opposite today, at least for affiliations to Republicans and Democrats. The South is primarily Republican and the North Democrat. So again, how? Well, a lot more happens in this time period, but A couple of key points over the next nearly 100 years shows how the parties shifted. In 1948, 
it sort of culminates behind a Southern Democrat supporting and signing equal rights protections into law. President Truman, with large support from Northern Democrats and Republicans, he was able to get these bills into legislation. Due to their discontent with these equal rights legislations, the Southern Democrat Party actually splits from the rest of the Democrats, even walking out of the Democratic Convention and become what is known as Dixiecrats. In 1964, Lyndon B. Johnson, another Southern Democrat, signs and promotes the Civil Rights Act. In 1965, he does the same thing for the Voting Rights Act. What's interesting is if you look at which states supported these pieces of legislation and which did not, it doesn't seem as bizarre as the parties who are putting them forward, because you can see a long historical divide stays consistent. And the states who would have been the South during the Civil War era, they voted almost 100% against the Civil Rights and Voting Rights Act. While all the northern states who would have been part of the Union voted for them within the Democratic Party. At this point, you could still just sort of stop for a moment and think, well, what was happening with the Republicans? Well, they primarily voted for these, and they were actually some of the largest groups of people who did vote for these pieces of legislation. But there was a noticeable chunk of the Republican Party who seemed sympathetic to the Dixiecrat messaging. And there seemed to be an opportunity there for the southern states. Through the 60s and 70s, it was clear that the South still felt it was suffering from the economic woes that abolishing slavery and Reconstruction caused and wanted to avoid them in the future. And the Republican Party saw a chance to win them over. So another staple of history started to pop up in another way. If you look back before the Civil War, Southern Democrats said they were pro-slavery because they were the party of states' rights. means they could keep slavery and other states could do whatever they wanted. And after Reconstruction started, when Andrew Johnson withdrew federal powers protecting equal rights, it was a pro-states' rights move. Or when the president at the time, uh, President Hayes, made a compromise... He withdrew federal powers, re-initiating or establishing states' rights. Dixiecrats walked out of the convention over equal rights bills and why people turned on the Democratic Party in floods after the mid-60s was all over states' rights. Key words now that have been used throughout history by government officials in the United States to indicate They want to allow states to determine what civil rights or equal rights means to them, which has historically ended up in the disenfranchisement of minorities, especially black people in this country, starting with enslavement to black codes, Jim Crow laws, poll taxes, and more. So yes, Lincoln was a radical Republican, voicing his desire to have federal powers make people free who were not at the time. He started the process. Democrats continued it in the 40s, 60s, and ongoing. I would be remiss if I didn't point out, I do not think that if you are a Republican, you are racist. Nor do I think that if there's a policy coming from the Democrats, it is in some way inherently better than something promoted just because it's from the Republicans. What I think is that if you're talking to a person who is trying to tell you that Lincoln was a Republican... So you should support the Republican Party today, especially if they are talking about civil rights issues. They either don't know the history of Lincoln or they're trying to trick you. If you hear someone say something like that or states rights as it pertains to civil rights, just ask yourself, WWLD, what would Lincoln do? Well, He supported, promoted, and died for the idea that equality isn't different in each state, that it means the same thing everywhere, and federal powers are the only way to guarantee the equal treatment of all people under the law. He did not trust that power in the hands of the states for good reasons then, and those stay good reasons now. 
This video is brought to you by Caffeine Zombies. Coffee's so good, it'll wake the dead.